So welcome to Five Elements Healing. I do this, I want to say five days a week, but no, it's actually 24-7. <laughs> and um, I am a licensed acupuncturist. And what I do is usually people find me on Yelp and they have all kinds of disorder. They're like, ah, I can't see. Or, ah, liquid is coming out of my ears. Or, ah, my kids are coughing and they have fever. Can you do something? And um, what's really interesting is that God is a really good God, right? God doesn't punish us by giving us fever and cough. God doesn't punish us by decreasing our eyesight. God doesn't punish us by having liquid coming out of our ears, right? So basically, everything that we experience in the body is God talking to us. Hey, pay attention, pay attention. There's something I want you to know. So basically every pain in the body, it's like a text message from God, okay? So imagine God's like, hey, Winnie, you got lower back pain? Give me your fear, okay? And you know, if you're coughing, it's like, how have you suppressed your voice so that you're not talking? And, you know, anyway, so the goal of this class is really because there are so many people who are maybe really good at praying, really good at meditation, and maybe they've already dabbled in spiritual healing, and they want to learn the science part so that they learn the map of the meridian, right? Look, okay, so look, if I ask you to identify where is your kidney located, okay, maybe you'll say, okay, it's in the back, okay? Maybe if I ask you, where's the heart located, you, you'd point to your chest, but if I ask you which finger does the lung meridian run through, probably most of you don't know, right? So this is kind of like, um, how can I put my four-year degree into like drip coffee? Every week, drip 20 minutes to you so you can learn how to heal yourself and then how to heal your friends and family. And the vice versa is also true. I have so many colleagues who are only in the science world where they have their medical doctors, nurses, acupuncturists, but they don't meditate or they don't pray to God and they don't have a spiritual component. So this class, wherever you are, if you're spiritual, learn the science. If you're scientific, learn the spiritual. So let's just open our heart to learning whatever it is that you are lacking. If you want more science, you're gonna get more science. If you want more spiritual, you're going to get more spiritual. So we're going to start by closing our eyes. Putting one hand over the heart and one hand over the lower abdomen. And we're just going to chant the syllable ah. Ah is a universal sound that opens the heart. Right? That's why we say mama, dada. That's why it's alleluia. The ah opens the heart. So we're just going to continuously come in when you have run out of breath, just come back in. Inhale to begin. Ah. Oh. Oh.
<laughs> Inhale. And hold your breath. Silently vibrate ah in every cell in your body. Open, 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 open. And exhale. So I want to tell you a little bit about my healing journey. So this was me in October 2015. <laughs> it's very victim me. I need help. Uh, I didn't love myself at all. And uh, after my four-year degree in acupuncture school, I was ready to serve. How can I help? How can I love you? I'm a safe space. And um then life happens and I became a trauma specialist. So now what I really specialize in is releasing trapped emotions in the body. So all the anxiety, fear, grief. Um, and I'm really blessed and honored to do that. So um, most of you have seen this. I, I'm a professor in acupuncture. And uh, I am here to help you break through whether you need more science or spiritual, that is where I can help. Okay. So the first thing is that all of these blockages that is stuck in our body is really because we want to be right. <laughs> you know, I have walked around feeling like I'm betrayed, I'm rejected, I'm abandoned, I'm suppressed. No matter what I do, I'm not good enough, right? Um, so today I ask you, are you ready to let go of all of that, to experience divine love, right? To experience, you can say, God's kingdom, you know, it doesn't matter if you read the Bible, or you read the Tao Te Ching. It doesn't matter if you read, you know, Buddhist Sutra, you practice yoga philosophy. Have you experienced love in your body? So feel free to close your eyes for most of this class because as it turns out, you know, uh, the Bible is written in human language and everything I'm seeing currently is in English. But actually, whatever you see on these PowerPoint slides and whatever I'm speaking right now is only 20% of the transmission. 80% of this class is not received with your brain. It's received with your soul, your heart, your energy, and your body. So everybody close your eyes right now. I want you to do a body scan. Maybe you have headache, you have hip pain, stomach pain, whatever it is. Give yourself a number, one to 10. And then silently say your name three times. And give yourself permission to transform this during this session. How? Okay. So I'm very honored and blessed to be a student of Master Shah, and he's given me a lot of empowerments to be in the field and hold this field for you. Okay, so my acupuncture mentor, Dr. Chu, he says this one very simple sentence. And there's this expression, da dao zhi jian, which means the, the truth is simple. So in practice, Dr. Chu says, basics is already advanced. Advanced is basic supplied. Now, some of you might be very advanced energy healer, and some of you have no experience of energy healing, and that's okay. 
because the basics is very easy to learn. And then if you're an advanced practitioner, this is where you learn how to apply the basics. Open your heart and you'll be amazed what you learn today. Even if you've taken my class 10 times, I tell you, you will learn something you didn't know before. So what is Qigong? Qi is energy. Gong is work. So Qigong is the practice of moving energy with intention. So guess what, guys? If you walk, you're doing Qigong. If you're doing yoga, you're doing Qigong. Standing, sitting, taking a shower, okay, singing, dancing. So, okay, when he, if I'm already doing it, then why are you teaching me? <laughs> why are you charging me $25? Okay, it's because the difference between um, Qigong with awareness and acceptance and without this awareness and acceptance is huge, right? So here, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is give you my cultivation of awareness, which includes my medical intuition. Um, medical intuition is where I can sense where the blockages are. And part two of this is accepting what is right okay so two parts awareness and acceptance so awareness is maybe easier because awareness is like oh i have head pain acceptance is when i can breathe into the head pain with no preference no attachment to whether there is hip pain or no hip pain, right? Martin Luther King says, hatred cannot drive out darkness, only love can. So if you hate your hip pain, I'm sorry, that hip pain is not going away. So you have to actually love your hip pain, loving, and accepting your hip pain is the beginning of transformation. So acceptance is transformation, right? It's kind of like if a child is crying. <laughs> if you said, shut up, I don't wanna hear you cry. Ah, oh, I'm frustrated, why you can't stop crying? Why are you crying, why are you crying? Versus, oh. Cute baby. Oh, why is my baby crying? Okay, so can we be that parent that when we experience these hip pain, that we can accept it? So when we are able to bring harmony inside the microcosm, right? And later on in the course, we're going to learn about the wars that are between our spleen and our liver. Okay, the war between the chi and the blood. Okay, the problem is we have wars inside our body. That's why we have wars in Russia and Ukraine and in China and Taiwan and, you know, between the Democrats and Republicans. Okay, we think that we are a victim of the outside circumstances, but it's actually not true. By cultivating the internal organ relationships between spleen and liver, between qi and blood. That is how we restore the yin-yang balance and the five elements balance. So if we want to heal the world, we go inside the body and heal ourselves. So let's bring a little bit science definition of what is energy. Okay, so here in the left, we have some cells, right? Okay, so we have cells of the intestine, cells of the esophagus, stuff of cells of the uterus. Energy is the space in between the cells. So notice that when you inhale and when you exhale, there is an expansion and contraction. And there is an inverse relationship between cell and space. So 
when this expansion and contraction is in equilibrium, then there is equilibrium between <laughs> matter and energy. And, okay, and then we don't have any, um, we don't have any pain. So the problem is when we are stuck, oh my God, that person betrayed me. Oh my God, that person took money from me. Oh my God, I don't deserve this. When we're stuck in a thought, that thought causes disruption in the expansion and contraction of the cell. And that is why if the cell grow, 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 that's how we get cancer, right? Okay, so how can we use energy to disperse pain, which means make something disappear? Okay, if we have cancer cell, if we have bursitis, if we have inflammation, we want to shrink it. And also, how do we manifest abundance, right? How do I just whip out, write a book, uh, start a new project, start a nonprofit? How can I just bring something into existence? Okay, so this is something that is written in the Yellow Emperor Classics. Huang Di Nei Jing is the, the oldest text that we have in Chinese medicine. And it says, Qi ju ze cheng xing. So when the qi concentrate and collect, form takes shape. So when we have nothing, right? This is the power of manifestation. If I really focus my energy, focus, 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 focus. Then I can actually create something into shape bring something from the world that is formless into something that takes form and shape. The opposite is 气散则行亡. When the qi scatter, the form disappears, right? So if we have cancer cell, that's what we want to do. We want the qi to scatter. So when we encounter pain, we can make it disappear. San ze cheng feng. We can make it scatter just like wind. Wouldn't it be nice if cancer can just go away like wind? And when we want to give birth to a baby, a project, a business, ju ze cheng xing gather and the form will take shape so there you have it the road to emptiness is to scatter which is to let go exhale right the road to infinite manifestation is to own it own it own your passion own your intensity right own your sex okay because actually the sex if you think about it whether you're a man or woman right? Whether you have a penis or a vagina, okay, this sex is how we bring baby into existence, right? So if you are disconnected from your sex, you are weak, you have no passion, you have no intensity. So we get to both practice, letting go, and also owning our intensity, so now we introduce the meridian, okay? So then the question is, where is the pathway of qi? So qi travels along jing luo. That's the Chinese name. Jing means meridian, luo means network. And they actually mean something different, okay? So jing is like the bus route, okay? So the bus route has bus stop. So, you know, for example, when I practice acupuncture, lung one, lung two, lung three, lung four, lung five. So these are the bus stops along the lung meridian. Luo is like a spider web, right? So, you know, visualize a spider web. We're all like nodes where we're interconnected. 
So the energy in the body runs along, you know, here I live in Los Angeles, a map. It's like a system of highways and roads. And next week, we'll dive deeper into the 12 organs and the eight extraordinary vessels, Qi Jing Ba Mai. But, you know, here I wanted to show you LA traffic. Okay, so the body is like a computer. One means flow. So when I turn on the light switch, if my circuit is complete, I will conduct electricity. That means there's an equilibrium of exchange between energy and matter. Zero means no flow. So you see all this red here? <laughs> Those of us living in LA are very intimately familiar. Stuck. So that means when I turn on the light switch, there is a break in the circuit. And so it does not conduct electricity. So the matter and energy exchange is not happening. So when we practice Qigong, we're doing two things. One, we're scanning where is the, the traffic congestion, okay? Where are the zeros in the body? And simply with awareness and acceptance we transform all the zeros into ones. So now we're gonna talk about yin yang and five elements. So what is yin yang? Okay, so most of us have unhealed childhood wounds. Okay, maybe we have father wounds, maybe we have mother wounds. So some of us have a fear of the masculine. Some of us have a fear of the feminine. And we have trouble giving and we have trouble receiving. So the yin is the feminine essence. So for example, if you look at somebody's shoulder, maybe you see that one shoulder is higher or maybe you see the other shoulder is higher. Would you have a shoulder that is higher this is your blockage. So after class, write this down as your homework. Stand in front of the mirror and see which shoulder is higher. This is where you are stuck. Okay, if you're stuck on the... Okay, so first of all, TCM has a map. Yoga has a map. And um, one thing I've learned is, because I study so many different systems, sometimes we have an expression, nan zuo nu yo. Man left, woman right. But then when I practice yoga, when we practice alternate nostril breathing, they said that the left side is the moon energy and then the right side is the sun energy. So what I've learned is that for everything that you think is true, the opposite is also true. So in my practice, I generally identify the left side of the body as feminine, the right side of the body as masculine. So generally I find that the people who are stuck doing, 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 they have a right shoulder that might look like like jutted forward, right? Because maybe they're always chopping vegetables. Maybe they're always driving. Um, whatever you're always doing, and then then you're like, wait, what about left-handed people? <laughs> That's why I firmly call myself a hacker and not a master, because what I've learned after studying uh, with so many masters is every master has a different mapping, a different system. So I've learned to just be really flexible and treat every patient, be like, hey, you know what? Sometimes I've actually had one girl whose heart organ is on the right side of the body. Wow, I was like, God actually can put a heart on the right side of the body. Okay, that is how amazing God is. Okay, so whatever I say in this class, please know that this is generally the textbook information. But generally, the feminine is soft. It's content is really good at accepting. 
utilizing everything that is here. So one example is the way I like to cook fried rice, okay? I like to look open my fridge and see, hey, what leftover do I have? Okay, chicken, let's throw that in. Spinach, let's throw that in, right? So the feminine principle is, well, you know what? If I have green onions, let's throw some green onions. If I have garlic, I'll use garlic. If I don't have garlic, I don't need to use garlic, okay? So this is like, if you cook like that, then it's feminine. Some people, they cook like, they gotta follow a recipe. One core spoons of salt. Okay, half spoon of butter. Okay, uh, four pounds of chicken. Okay, if you follow a recipe very exactly, that's very masculine. So there isn't a right and wrong. I really believe that God made all of us perfect. Some of us have OCD uh, over here. Okay, perfectionists. And some of us have ADHD. We can't seem to mind the details. And maybe some of us are artistic, whatever, whether you have anxiety, depression, I really believe that God made each of us perfect. You know, it's like some of us is the hand, some of us is the foot, some of us is the head, the heart, the kidney. As a doctor, I don't really like to look at what's wrong with the person. I like to look at what's perfect about the person and how can we at the same time, restore the balance, but also help them appreciate that the way they are is already perfect. So laws of yin yang, and I'm really going to dive into this because this is the bread and butter of TCM. And so TCM came out of a lot of Taoist principle. So here we have the white fish and the black fish. And within the white fish, there's a black dot. And within the black fish, there's a white dot. So you can see that yin and yang are opposite, right? So, okay, if you are warm, that's yang. If you're cold, that's yin. Yin and yang are interdependent. So what that means in TCM, yang is qi, energy, and yin is blood. So what is the relationship, right? Yang is the commander of yin. So qi moves blood, right? Without energy, the blood just sits there. So you actually need energy to move the blood, but the blood is like the mother. The blood nourishes and grounds and anchors the yang. Okay, so without this yin, the yang would just rise and Okay, that's why we have high blood pressure. Okay, we have stroke. We have all these, um, you know, things that move upward uncontrollably, that's yin-yang balance, okay? So if you tend to have stroke or high blood pressure, that's probably because you have a lot of anger and your, your yang is not grounded by your yin, okay? So it's kind of like this, the yang wants to fly off the handle and then the yin is like, come back down, okay? So yin is like grounding the yang. So, as a society, we really don't like darkness, right? We, we don't like it. But if you look at the symbol, the black fish is the same size as the white fish. So it's really interesting. There's an interdependent relationship between yin and yang, right? Yang moves and yin nourishes they cannot separate. Yin needs yang to grow and yang needs yin to grow. So this bullet point is so key because so many people don't like it when they're dark. So, okay, dark can also be new moon. It can be winter. It can be nighttime. It can be rain right so 
because I am connected to the Tao, or you can say I am connected to the universe, when it's the winter, when it's cold, rainy, nighttime, new moon, all of that we had this weekend, <laughs> my darkness comes out, you know? Okay, not that I'm a victim and helpless, but I am influenced by the weather. Because I, you remember the microcosm and the macro universe, right? I am but a speck of dust. So I can be influenced by outside, but you know what? I can also influence weather pattern. Or I can make use of weather pattern because remember the feminine principle. The feminine principle is the fried rice principle. I open the fridge. I see, you know, leftover spinach and leftover chicken. I make a fried rice, okay? So the feminine principle is I look at the weather. I see rain, then I act accordingly. I see temperature change, I act accordingly. I look to heaven for guidance and I do activity accordingly. Right. So, you know, some of us plan our calendar like, oh, well, I should take a vacation in the winter or summer. So know that when it's the summer, it's good to get things done. But winter is a time to hibernate. Right. So when you honor the light and dark in nature, you're going to have more harmony with the external environment and inside your organ, right? So for example, okay, I'm kind of like a recovering workaholic, <laughs> which means I'm in my yang all the time. I'm like to do, do, do. I'm not very good at resting. And so when it was, you know, winter, new moon, nighttime, cold, rainy, and I tried to do too much, I literally collapsed almost fainted in the shower. Okay, so don't do that, okay? Um, yeah, so we want to look at, we call 天时地利人, and 天时 means heaven timing. Okay, we got to look at the heaven timing. 地利 means earth advantage. So we got to look at what resources are here, 人和, so human harmonious relationship. So the point number three is that yin and yang are constantly transforming into each other. What does that mean? The clock is ticking one second at a time. We never can stay stuck. If you feel stuck, I'm sorry, babe, it's an illusion. Okay, the clock is ticking 24 seven and guess what? We are constantly transforming from light to dark, to light, to dark. So when we're light, we can radiate love and light to our community. When we are dark, we need to not be with other people, okay? So let's say if I'm dark, oh my God, I lose my um, cuss word that starts with an S, and then my temper goes out and then it spills out like I'm spilling toxins into the world, right? No good, don't do that. So when we're in the dark, what we want to do is close the door, create a safe container. Okay, if you like to pray to God, you know, pray to God. If you like to meditate, meditate. Whatever your practice is, when it is dark, close the door. Don't leak your toxins into the world until you're back into the light and then you can serve again. So we each have a responsibility that when we're in the dark, when we're in the purification, that we don't go and hurt the people we love. Okay, I didn't know this and so that's why I had a divorce, okay. Um, in the past, I wasn't very good at managing my darkness. I just let my anger out and no good. Okay, don't do that. All right. So know that we're constantly transforming. And when we're in the dark, get help. Okay. Sometimes the dark feels very heavy. 
like moving through molasses. You're like, oh, I can't do it. That is why we ask for help. That's why we pay the money and hire the therapist. Because when people offer us help, it's like, hey, I'm in the dark tunnel. But when we get help from somebody, they are carrying the light for us, taking our hand and walking us out of the tunnel. So that's why everybody should have a therapist. All right. Within yang, there is yin. Within yin, there is yang. So in the night, there are stars. And in the day, there is shade. Okay, so white is when we serve. So actually, technically, there's no such thing as purely unconditional service because if white is service, it is actually grounded by the black, which is a desire to serve, right? And then when we're in the dark, no matter how dark we are, no matter how bad the monster is, the pure essence, you can call that Christ consciousness, Buddha nature, light, whatever you want to call this. In yoga, we say namaste, but you know you can call it Christ consciousness. No matter how dark it gets, this part of us that does never ever change is always there. And so the purpose of the darkness is not like God gave us darkness so we would suffer. <laughs> God gave us darkness so we could go deeper and deeper inside to connect to the God essence, Christ consciousness, Buddha nature, whatever you want to call this. So the purpose of purification is to help us know the truth about our connection to God. All right. Yay. How are we doing on time? Okay. So I, at this time, uh, okay, yeah, I remember I planned this perfectly. I just want to give a little preview. Next week, we're going to talk about five elements, a really deep dive about the mother-child relationship, okay? So for example, um, anger is the mother of abandonment and mother um, abandonment is the mother of overthinking and overthinking is the mother of grief. Grief is the mother of fear. So we're going to really learn about the mother-child relationship, okay? Because this affects you know, a liver, gallbladder, heart, spleen, medicine. Oh, that's so complicated. Okay, we're going to leave that for next week. But the organs, the emotions, this is like the wheel of suffering. And next week, we're going to dive really deep into the five elements, the mother-child relationship, the grandmother relationship, okay? There is abusive and controlling relationship in this and it is important that we master this relationship so that we don't take it out on our family members. All right, at this time, we're gonna practice Qigong. So Yellow Emperor said, Tong, ze bu tong. Tong, ze bu tong. <laughs> I know it's so funny to even just say that, but simply where there is pain, there's no flow. Where there's flow, there's no pain. Okay, so the practice of Qigong is to scan the body for where there's pain until there's flow, okay, very easy. So, um, okay, I'm gonna just skip this and talk about this next week. All right, all right, so at this time, so are you able to turn this on? All right. Okay, so over this course, we're going to introduce arm movements and leg movements. But I need to really seriously impress upon you the importance of foundation. What is our foundation? Our foundation is the heart. Our foundation is our lower dantian. And if you've never heard of this word before, the lower dantian is located below the belly button and above the pubic bone. 
if I get fancy on the handwork and if I get fancy with my footwork, but I disconnected from my heart and Dantian and eh, fail, okay? I would rather that you not move your hands. I would rather that you not move your legs. But at all times, you must hold on to your heart and your lower Dantian. Because remember, Standing is qigong, sitting is qigong, lying down is qigong. But if you are disconnected from heart, you're disconnected from who you are, you're dis disconnected from God, you know, you're disconnected from your heart and soul. So if you're not in your heart, <laughs> you're losing 90% of the practice. Okay, and the lower dantian. The lower dantian is like a battery. Okay, so if you look at your iPhone, you have 3% battery problem, okay? We want to be as close to 100% at all time. See, the oxygen mask goes on ourself first, right? So if I'm running with 10% battery and I try to help somebody, eh, no good, okay? I cannot tell you how many times I've made that error, okay? So we really only want to serve other people with a full charged Dantian. And another key secret is alignment. So even it's kind of like this, um, my acupuncturist teacher said, you can put 10 needles into the person, but if that person is crooked, how can the river flow if the river is crooked, right? So alignment is king because, you know, if, if you're out of alignment, very little water can come through your channel. If you're in the right alignment, the whole pillar, the whole pipe is like running through you, okay? So today I really just want to talk about alignment because if you don't have alignment, you have nothing, right? In Chinese, we call it hua quan xiu tui, okay? So you're just like dancing. You're not actually grounded in your power. So we're gonna talk about stance, you know, how to engage the pelvic floor, the neck, all the locks that we need to put in place so that we're in good alignment. So the first thing I like to do is go to the wall. The reason why I go to the wall, okay, so imagine I'm standing against the wall, but all of you, if you can, go stand against the wall. Don't worry about the camera, okay? But the reason why we want the wall is because so many of us have one shoulder high or one shoulder low. And the wall is like the yoga teacher. <laughs> the one that is giving you feedback so when you use the wall to practice, close your eyes, move your shoulder up and down and use the wall as a ruler, as a feedback so that you can see really which, can you really feel which shoulder is higher? And then whichever shoulder that is higher, give your body a command. Dear my shoulder, please relax. You have the power to relax. Do a good job. Perfect. And now check out your pelvis. Okay. So some of us, okay, some of us might have like one hip high, one hip low. Okay. We don't want that. Okay. So use the wall, lean against the wall. And maybe you can also put your hand on your hips. Close your eyes. Which hip is higher and lower? And maybe you want to actually exaggerate, okay? Do a little high hip, low hip. Okay, so open your hips a little bit. And then you can see I have one high hip and one low hip. And so if you're burping, yawning, farting, Tap it out. Let that blockage come out of you. This is Qigong, okay? 
it, it, Qigong doesn't have to be very complicated steps. It could be very intuitive. Okay, so hands on the hips. Use the wall to give yourself a ruler. Which hip is higher? Dear my hip, I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. You have the ability to heal yourself. Please do a good job. And you might notice that your hip is shaking. So when we're shaking, that's actually the trauma stored inside the body coming out. So when you shake, remember the key acceptance. Accept the shaking, love the shaking. Okay, if the baby is crying, you won't say bad baby, bad, bad, bad. Okay, you say, oh, poor baby. Did you poop in your diaper? Okay, so if your body starts to shake, I want you to mother or father the shaking and just say, oh, poor baby. And just let yourself shake. Okay, another key is to keep a little micro knee bend. Okay, so here I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. Okay, so bring one knee forward and back. Okay, so loosen the joints a little bit. And you want, I'm going to give you a side view, you want a little bit bend in the knee. A lot of times, if you watch people do Qigong, they have straight knee, okay? <laughs> the purpose of Qigong is to be like a mountain, to cultivate qing jing xin. Now, if I'm standing like this and a child comes and push me, I cannot be firm, right? If I want to be grounded, I got to put my weight into... So my Qigong teacher says, it's almost like you're wearing shoes that weigh 90 pounds. <laughs> wearing these shoes that are 90 pounds, you try to lift your foot from the ground and you cannot lift the foot from the ground, okay? So wear these tin shoes that are 90 pounds, you cannot lift it off the floor, bend the knees, put your hands on the hips. Okay, now we're going to talk about the tucking of the hips, right? So, you know, move your hips up and down a little bit. So what we want, most of us put the body back and sit in a chair, right? So if we're used to sitting all day long, we are got to do the opposite. So we want to tuck. Uh, in Chinese, we call it ti gang. T means to lift, gang means the anus, okay? So it's almost like you're squeezing your anus and pulling that up. In Kundalini Yoga, we call that, you know, pulling, you know, the snakes, the, the, the energy up, okay? So you want to engage and pull the energy up. And with that, we can just practice a little bit. I'll show the hand movements, okay? So, okay, so remember tin shoes, heavy feet, can't lift it off the floor. Knees is a little bit bent. And then the hips, even, no hip hike. And we got that anus tuck in muscle. Okay, so we just simply, with the hand, just put it on the side. Remember to check that the shoulder is not one high or one low. And this whole time, there's bao yuan shou yi. Bao means to hold. Yuan is this original essence, this oneness. Shou means to guard. Yi is the oneness. So basically, we want to stay in this oneness condition, right? All the spiritual tradition is one, all the science and spiritual is one. 
Asians and other ethnicities, white people, black people, all kinds of people, all kinds of skin color are one, man, woman is one, is really practice. And if you're shaking, just accept it, love it. So check your spine that it's actually long. So it's almost as if somebody is pulling your hair. So there's a lot of space between each vertebrae. So imagine that you're lengthening the spine. There's a lot of room in your vertebrae. And now lift your hand up a little bit as if you're holding a ball in front of your lower dantian. And visualize golden light inside what we call the zhong, okay? So the zhong is between the belly button and ren wen, okay, hui yin, which is uh, the perineum, okay? So the scientific medical terminology is, if I put one finger on the posterior border of the testicles or on the posterior border of the vagina and then put one finger on the anus, the midpoint, that is the scientific definition of ren wen, hui ying. Okay, so ren wen in the front, belly button in the front. And then if I trace a straight line from the belly button to the back, that's called ming men. And in the back we have wei lu, okay? So that's the tailbone. So this whole thing is the what we call zhong, okay? That's our core. Kind of like when we do Pilates, we want to engage the core. So visualize this whole space is just filled with golden light when you're holding this ball. And pretty much you can feel with each breath, there's golden light coming in to fill your battery 360 degrees. And because your foundation is so light, this light explodes and your entire central channel, your whole column, spine, every organ, chakra, turn into golden light, the whole pillar. And so if you're brand new to Qigong, actually just two to three minutes of standing meditation is enough. So, um, you know, I'm not in person instruction. If you're brand new and you feel pain, please sit down. You'll get the same benefit. So in the beginning, maybe you practice two, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, ultimately practice 45 minutes, you know. Um, but imagine potentially you can stand here for four to five hours. That's what actually at Qigong Masters do. Just very simple standing meditation. Zhan Zhuang. Okay, so we're gonna take a break. Just uh, let your knees come up and let's bring our arms up. I'm gonna do that two more times. Inhale. And one more time. Okay, so um, I wanted to give everybody a chance to turn on the camera and um, give me see some feedback. What is the one thing that you learned and enjoy? And what is something that I could do better so that next week we can um, get better and better? Okay, so I'm gonna take it that everybody just loved the experience. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, it was good. Um, the lesson was definitely, it's, you know, it's like, yeah, I love how you're the spiritual and the science, right? I think it's good that now we're, we're having them like really understand each other because you would not want it one way or the other way. And so thank you for like really bringing that on and explaining that and putting that into practice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because I think a lot of um, my friends here, like how and Tara, you guys are very advanced um, spiritual people, but being able to explain it in scientific terms and being able to ground that in your shoulders and your hips and really taking that into an embodied experience right um it's it's really valuable and yeah so um next week uh, feel free to email me if you have any questions we can also do uh demos if anybody has any um health conditions we can actually uh, it would be fun if we uh, once we introduce the organ so i think the first three classes will lay down you know the 12 meridians eight extraordinary meridians you know talk about the foundation but once we lay down the basics you guys can bring your friends bring your case study your clients okay well i had a client with endometriosis and this 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 or i have this breast cancer patient that 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 so we can actually bring um, you know, our family and friends uh, case study, and we can talk about the TCM part of that. Great. Okay, really, really love you. See you next week. Thank you, Winnie. Yes, Appreciate bye. you. Thank you.